Hello everyone, welcome to my coloring corner. Uh, this is Renee and today uh, is Monday which is um, Collection Mania Monday. So we're going to go through one of the lovely pencils I have in my collection. And these are the Art and Fly colored pencils. They are an oil based pencil and they are absolutely wonderful, wonderful pencils. Um, I haven't colored a lot with these. I did recently just receive them. So I, uh, this should be fun. I've colored a couple of pictures with them and I just love the way they go down. I'm going to move these out of the way. Um, first I'm going to go through and, and talk to you about the colors. Of course we've got our yellows into our oranges. I'm going to turn off this light so it doesn't blind you. Uh, we've got our, our yellows into our oranges, into our reds, into our pinks, and then down here we've got some more pinks down here, into our purples, into our blues, and our greens. And then on this page we have our greens into our skin tones, into our browns, and into our grays. Now this is a 72 pencil set. It is not a huge set but it's a good size set. It will give you all the colors you possibly need. Um, I'm going to take a look at our swatch sheets and I'm going to actually slide it out because I think that's catching some light. I'll slide it out of this so you can see it a little bit better. That's a little better. So we've got like I said it is numbered and named. I do believe. Yes, uh, they are numbered and named. So we've got our yellows into our, our yellow browns like the honey, the butterscotch, uh, Tangelo is into the oranges, into our reds. It has a fantastic amount of reds. I, I love a good set of pencils that have a good, good set of, of reds of course into our magenta. Magenta and raspberry to me are very close to the same color. Uh, raspberry does seem to be a little bit um, lighter than the magenta. And into our blues. Now indigo for me is is normally a very dark blue and in this set it does seem to be a purple color which is fine too but I'm used to it being a really, really, really dark blue, like this Prussian blue or the Oxford blue. And then it goes down into your blues, of course, into your water, water greens and water blues, and then into your, your landscape greens. And I have no idea why I have two of the same sheets. I didn't finish one side for some reason. Very strange. <laughs> I have no idea why I did that. I must have been thinking of something, but obviously that thought got derailed somewhere along the lines. Um, but they they have a really good uh, deep greens, the emerald, uh, moss, the forest greens, artichoke, cadmium. So they have a really wide selection of of both lights and dark greens which is really good for people like me that do a lot of coloring in floral things and then they go into um, what I consider the skin tone areas um, the the really light yellows here I would rather have in the yellow category but right now I have them all set up in numerical order so and then we go into our um, melons, into our salmon, you know, the colors that you would use for skin tone. The carrot as well, I would prefer to have over in the oranges. And the tawny as well uh, in with the sepia, the honey, and the butterscotch. Other than that, um, you know, and of course you can rearrange these any way you want to. I have them in numerical order just because that's just the way my brain works. Um, but if you decide that you like those in a different family, uh, different color family, of course move those into a different color family. You don't have to go by the number. You can go by the color or you can go by, you know, whatever you want to go by, of course. 
another thing that that um, I have noticed with this set as well and it's not a bad thing um, personally I would prefer to see a bit lighter on the gray uh, the lightest gray they have is a pewter and it's a little bit dark for me I would prefer to see a lighter gray as well that of course is just my opinion and my thoughts on it um, of course my opinion is just just that it's my opinion I love absolutely love 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 the way these pencils go down on coloring book paper as well as cardstock today we're going to use cardstock and we're going to of course do our little guy here so I'm going to switch you over to the other camera so you can see that better and we're going to be working on this little guy here so we're going to need some browns we're going to need some floral colors and we're going to need some greens so we're going to take our trusty little thing here and we're going to grab our colors now I do this constantly I I sit there and go I wish and then I never do <laughs> And then you guys have to deal with me pulling colors. I am sorry. I should have done this first, but I did not. So, so what we're going to grab is we're going to grab a sepia. And you can tell I've used that pencil because, oops, sorry. Just knock the camera around, Renee. You can tell I've used that pencil because it is sharpened to a very fine point. And I'm going to use... Um, I think I'm going to use pecan, sepia and pecan for his body and a little bit of tawny for his shell with a little bit of sandstone. So those are the four colors we're going to use for the snail itself and his shell. So we're going to grab some lovely greens. I think uh, this one. And I need this one, I think. And just for fun, this one. Okay, so there's our greens. Now, of course, these are very, very, very small leaves. So we don't need to use three different greens. I am going to use different greens on different leaves. And then we want some bright pink. I think this one. And come out come out so that one is raspberry and I'm gonna grab bubble gum maybe no yeah we'll grab bubble gum I love the name on that bubble gum it's bubble gum pink and then we're gonna grab some purples with I think this one. Okay, so we've got our floral colors here. We've got some purples. We've got some pinks. And I'll grab a blue and a light blue. Um, so is that Zazier? No, it's baby blue. That'll work. Okay, so we've got a blue a set of blue as well, and we'll be using that for the sky as well. And we're just going to move this out of the way so that I don't keep bumping it with my arm. And we'll put our pencils over here, and we'll get started on his body. Let's put the, and of course, I always use my doll 133 
so that I don't break the leads of the pencils. And what we're going to start with here is called Pecan, which is number 66. Got it to a nice good good tip there. Uh, move those out of the way. I really should just put those in. I'm going to put them in my, my holder here so that I don't knock them on the floor. So we're just going to do our areas of shadow. And as you can see, I'm not pressing hard at all. And that color is just going on there. It's I am using a 65 pound cardstock. And it just seems to flow on there. Now I'm not doing a whole lot around this edge here on the bottom. I'm just putting in enough of a thin shadow there to show that those areas are a little bit higher than the ones underneath. Like these ones here are lower than these ones here than this part here up top. And then we're going to go through this side and put a good shadow under the shell. So even with the cardstock and I am using the, this cardstock has two different sides. One is a smoother side, one is a, a bit toothier. And I am using the toothy side just so that you know what, what uh, amount of tooth is coming through on the page. Just going to go over that a little bit. Sorry, I had a bit of an itch. Okay, so now we're going to take our sepia and we're just going to go over top of those shadows. And yes, I know you should always go light to dark. But I do not. I, I tend to go from dark to light and then I run the light over top of the dark, which I find brightens it. I've been told over and over and over again by different uh, videos and everything else that you should always start with the light and then put the dark over top, but I don't. I want the, the dark to be there as a shadow, not as the dominant color. Okay, and if you do find that your dark is, you know, a little bit too lightened in an area because there's too much white spot or whatnot, just go over it again with your dark. You know, it just, you can build those colors up. And that's another thing I really like about these pencils um, is the when you color with them, it, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. So it, it gives a good amount of color, even with a light touch. So you can build that color throughout the whole time that you're coloring. These pencil crowns are very, very, very um, pigmented. So the color just stands right out. All right, now we're going to take this one here, which is the sandstone. And we're just going to make his face a little bit of a different color. All right. Closer to that line. Now I want to go 
go under here and make sure that the shadow on his face, bottom part of his chin there, is showing because the sun is not getting there. And then we'll do his little antennae. And that is the part of our snail there. Now I'm going to take the tawny and I'm just going to color in these little areas underneath. Now I want a shadow from the ground so I'm just going to put just a little bit around the bottom edge here where the ground is touching. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. It is Monday so we are at the start of the week and of course you know the it is cold here today, so hopefully it doesn't snow. It says that it's supposed to rain, but you know what happens when it's really cold and it starts to rain? You get this lovely stuff called snow. And I'm not very fond of snow. Now, just to give a bit of a different color there, a different tone, because we've got brown on brown on brown. I'm just taking the uh, raspberry, which is a bit of a, a reddy pink color, almost a purple. And I'm just going around the edges here just to give a, a bit of a darker color there and a bit more, more color. You know, I know his shell is going to be quite colorful with the flowers, but doesn't make a difference if you know he's just brown and brown and brown. However this is to show you how these pencils work not to you know make everything beautiful but I prefer to make everything beautiful so <laughs> it's just the way I am and I think I did yeah I did okay I put away my oil-based blender. So I'm going to try to blend it with this wax-based blender. Now typically I would not suggest using a wax-based blender unless you absolutely have to on an oil-based pencil because sometimes a wax-based blender is harder than the oil-based blenders. So it just ends up scratching off more color than it does blending. But the Prisma Blender doesn't seem to be doing too bad with these pencils. So, And of course, use your brush, not your hand. I know I say that and then I use my hand, right? But that is typical. All right. So there's our body of our little snail guy. Now I'm going to actually turn the light on here because, well, let's leave it on because it helps me see these little tiny details. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go around where the curvature of his shell is and where the shadows will be from all these wonderful little flowers. And I'm doing that in this purple color and the reason why I am doing it in the purple color is because once I go over this purple color with the light brown it's just going to turn into a reddish brown color I hope. And if not that's fine too. 
because I kind of like it purple. <laughs> All right, now we're just going to take this uh, sandstone and give it a bit of a sharpen because those spots are quite small. Now, of course, when you're coloring really tight areas, there's always a time and a place for for when you need a dull pencil, you know, especially if you're shading. But if you're coloring into tight spaces and want that color to, to penetrate, sorry about that. I do apologize. I have a train next to my house here, and I have no idea when it's going to decide that it's going to do that. <sighs> it's always fun when it decides to do that when I'm in a video. And of course, now it's going to shake my camera, isn't it? No, it's not too bad. Yes, it is. Sorry about that. There, it's all gone now. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to have to get out there and yell at Amtrak. I swear they do it on purpose. <laughs> probably don't. They probably sit there going, I really don't care who lives there. That's my job. I gotta do what I gotta do to make sure people are safe, which I completely understand. It just uh, is loud. And normally, they don't normally blow their whistle like that. So this one, one particular one does it every once in a while. Not a whole lot to, to be concerned about, but sometimes it's annoying. But when I see people walking the tracks, I completely understand why they do blow the horn like that because I have seen people walking up and down the tracks and it just drives me crazy. Alrighty, so we're going to do this one here and put down our dark down here in the shadow area. It's amazing how much detail is on this little tiny um, snail shell. No, is that not that sepia? That's not the right one. What did I do with it? There it is. Grab the wrong pencil. Now, is there any more that I'm missing? all sorts of little tiny tiny little details in in these shells and with all the little flowers so I'm gonna do this one and I think I'm going to do this one down here just to work in, in threes. All right, now we're going to take our bubble gum and we're just going to give him a bit of bubble gum. Now, of course, because this is extremely small uh, area to work in, make sure that you're nice and sharp because It's a very, very, very delicate little, little tiny areas. And I just go right over top of that dark color, blend it in.
and just bring that color all together. So I hope you all, um, I hope everyone is enjoying the new format for the videos. I know this is only the second week and it will be the first week when we do an entire week of uh, the schedule. So I hope you all uh, really, really enjoy that. So the next segment after this one will be um, Work in Progress Wednesday. And what Work in Progress Wednesday is, is um, when we go through and take a look at the different works that uh, I'm working on, as well as this time, the time around, we're going to have uh, DJ with us. And I just put down the wrong color. We're going to have uh, the de de Divisa. I keep on calling her Divisa, but it's Divisa. We're going to have Divisa with us from DJ's um, channel, and uh, she's going to show us what she's been working on and how much progress she's made from the Saturday Color Along. And I'm going to show you how much progress I've made with the Saturday Color Along, and it's going to be a live thing. So we'll work on whatever we're, we've been working on. I've been working on that Saturday Color Along because I just absolutely love Scott Howden's books. And his work is just wonderful. So that's what I've been working on. That and my P, uh, Peter Rabbit book. But I'm not going to show that one until it's all done. Just because that's just the way it is. I want to, that way I don't have to, uh, you know, say, well, this is Peter Rabbit by such and such and such and such. I can just do an entire flip through of the entire book all at once. Oh, and you know what I did? I forgot to grab a color for the center of these flowers. So I'll have to go back in after I'm done with these colors and pick out center colors, which won't be hard because it's pretty much yellow. All right, now for our blues. I've got pencils everywhere. I try to keep them all in their bucket, but then I, you know, I, I use one and sit there going, okay, well, I might need that one again. So I put it over to the side and then I use one and I go, I might need that one again. And I put it to the side and sooner or later I have 20 pencils to the side and I haven't needed any of them yet. This, I'm just putting in the dark first for the dark part of the flower, covering the shadow areas because this flower is over top of this one. Most of the leaf, uh, the flower is going to be dark, so it's going to be shadowed. And one more little guy over here. Okay, I'm going to sharpen this one. I have a habit of putting them back in their case without sharpening them. Just when I'm done coloring with them, they go back in the case. And I don't sharpen them again, so when I have to use them, I have to sharpen them. And sometimes that's a good thing uh, with the amount of pencils I have. And I give each and every one of them as much love as I can. But because I haven't been doing a lot of coloring in the past little while, I've been 
setting up the new new YouTube channel and getting all that stuff set up and making sure all my videos are are compliant to any sort of legal possibility of problems and moving on with life I haven't had a whole lot of time to just sit down and color which is terrible because I love sitting down and coloring all right now we're gonna do the the sweet little leaves and then we'll be almost all done we've got the centers to do and that's about it and I think that's a petal that I have missed with that pink so let's grab the pink just gotta fill that in because it looks like a petal to me may not be but it looks like it is to me oh you know what I did it is a petal but I, I messed up and I colored the center of the flower as if it were a petal so I'm just taking my eraser and the uh, Faber-Castell pencil erasers seem to work pretty good on erasing this I'm not putting a lot of pressure down because it's a very small area and I don't want to erase other parts of the flower. See? See what I did? I messed up. But that's what erasers are made for, right? For fixing all our mess ups. At least that's what I think erasers were made for anyway, because I mess up a lot. I have mess ups all the time, and my erasers get lots of use. And I know I'm not the only one. The one thing I really, really love about these um, pencil crayons is they blend together so nicely that uh, you're not having to, to constantly go back and forth, back and forth just to get that color level. And you're not having to use that blender pencil a whole lot. Especially for these really tiny areas because I've tried using blender pencils on small areas and sometimes it just makes a muddy mess. So I don't normally do that. If it doesn't blend then I'm going back and forth back and forth with the different colors trying to make it blend and sometimes that doesn't work so good especially with little tiny areas such as these little tiny leaves all right there's our leaves okay now we're gonna reach in here and I just grab a yellow I think which one's this one oh, by all means yellow <laughs> I thought it was going to be sunset or something and we're just gonna color in the centers of the flowers here
Okay, and there is our cute little art and fly snail. Now in comparison between the two, of course there's not a lot of colors that are the same. So I'm going to quickly see if I can get you a little bit closer here so that uh, we can take a look and see if we can compare the greens uh, between the two. So let's take a look here. I think we can go one more. movie over a little bit okay so we've got um, the art and fly green here and then the Arteza greens here now of course I used a lighter green here than I did on this side so it's not really a huge uh, mostly comparing the lighter the darker greens because I do believe they were the named the same but they are very bright on both they blend very well and actually I think the the art and fly bl blend just a little tiny bit better than the Arteza and I think that's just because I put a really heavy layer on with the Arteza um, the pinks blended beautifully together, the purples blended really nice, the blues blended really nice, and that sort of thing. I'm going to give uh, a bit of a background, the same as I did with the Arteza here. And I'm just going to very, very, very gently. Now, it would be preferable that the pencil was um, dull, but... And this is not a sky blue. This is only a baby blue, so it is lighter than the sky blue that I used there. And like I said, I'm not uh, pressing hard. I'm just shading. So I have my hand at the very, very end of the pencil giving enough crayon onto the paper just to make it look like a blue sky and of course we'll blend that in a little bit and see how well that blends with it just being a shade sometimes shades don't blend very well because there isn't enough crayon there to blend um, and when there's not enough crayon in on the paper then of course you can't blend anything into it right you know of course I could have done this with say my pan pastels or with a uh, bit of paint or anything like that but we're here to demonstrate and to take a look at how these pencil crayons work I know I did a review for them, um, but as I told you all before, I will be reviewing things and adding them to my collection. And as they go into my collection, they will get a collection video as well. And because I am starting my collection videos over again, we get to start with A. And this is the last pencil crown in my A section in my A, B's and C's. So the next one we're going to do is uh, the Brunzeals. I think we'll have to take a look. Actually, yeah, actually it might be the Blix. I think Blix might be next. I'll have to take a look and see what alphabetical order they are in the bag. And if they're in the wrong alphabetical order, I'll have to change them. <laughs> okay, so we've got the, the pencil crown blended here as, as good as it's going to get with a light blend. I could probably go over this with a 
uh, blender stump and get a better blend, especially with a little bit of uh, Vaseline or um, blending fluid. But for a blender pencil on a light, very, very lightly colored area, it did pretty good with that. So that is the Art and Fly. We've done the Amazon Basics, which were absolutely beautiful. They blended together really nice. Um, the dark blues didn't blend together into the medium blues as well as I would have liked them to. But all in all, uh, for a budget-friendly pencil, very, very nice. I do apologize for my fingers. I ha We had carrots last night, and for some reason it stained my fingers. Even after having a bath, it won't come off. <laughs> and then today I'm making chili, so of course I've got stains from that all over my hands too. But with, with the Amazon Basics, for a very, very, very budget-friendly pencil, absolutely wonderful pencil. And I would not give up my Amazon Basics um, for any reason. Well, I wouldn't give up any of my pencils for any reason. Uh, a lot of people do say that uh, they are a budget-friendly um, alternative to Prismas. I wouldn't say that. Um, they are a budget-friendly pencil that you can complement your Prismas with. So if you have a very small set of Prismas and you want to, you know, expand that color a bit, absolutely it is an, a good alternative to expand that um, color range if you don't have the ability to purchase the larger set of Prismas. Now the Artezas are so smooth and they're very, very vibrant. Their reds are so nice and they go down beautifully and I'm so happy with the way they turn out. And then we have our Art and Fly and it has gone down beautifully. I haven't had to uh, blend a whole lot and what I did have to blend, it blended very, very well. And I would definitely recommend this set as well for uh, anyone that uh, enjoys colored pencils and enjoys oil-based colored pencils. They are fantastic. So that is the three that we've done so far. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, if you do enjoy the video, of course, like, comment, let me know that you were here and what you what you think. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Let's get me up to 100 so I can shorten my name a bit. Um, again, the Art and Fly pencils, absolutely wonderful pencil. And I will be doing a color along at some point very soon with these pencils. So... I hope you join me for that. And that, is, of course, is always on Saturday when we do our Saturday color alongs. If you have any questions, make sure that you do leave them in the chat. Um, Art and Ply, I thank you so much for providing the ability uh, to use, well, for, for putting these out in in to the into the marketplace i did purchase this set of pencils this is a hundred percent my own opinion it was not endorsed by or um or purchased by uh art and fly whatsoever this is my hundred percent honest opinion of these of these wonderful pencil crowns so have a wonderful day always relax continue to color and stay safe. With that, bye-bye for now.